hello guys welcome back to my channel it's me again if you're new here welcome my name is amaka and i will be your favorite esthetician in the nearest future i promise you that anyway today we're talking about vaseline how to use vaseline to achieve a perfect glowing skin there's no perfect skin but yeah you get the gist now the new terminology for that i don't know if it's a new terminology but the trending terminology for that is called slugging. Slugging is essentially when you slather on Vaseline or any ointment on your face, usually overnight. Today, we are specifically addressing Vaseline and how you can use it to achieve a healthy skin. So what is Vaseline essentially? Because you have to understand what is Vaseline to understand what we're actually talking about. So Vaseline, this one that we all know essentially is 100% petroleum jelly. Vaseline is just the brand name. It's now so popular that it has now become generic. When you hear Vaseline, you just think about petroleum jelly. Whereas it is just petroleum jelly. So once you enter the store and you just see 100% petroleum jelly, that is what is in Vaseline. So essentially, this video is really about petroleum jelly like how to use it the pros the cons and the best way to use it for a healthy skin if you're interested in this please keep on watching <music> So petroleum jelly is also called white petrolatum, soft paraffin. So when you look at the ingredient list and you see any of these um, names, you know that it contains petroleum jelly or petrolatum. So petrolatum or petroleum jelly is derived from crude oil. Please, Biko, you are not using fuel on your face. You are not using petrol. You are not using gasoline. You are not using kerosene is different cosmetic grade derivatives of crude oil are not the same thing as industrial ones now most people that kick against petroleum jelly have this mixed up do you get they they see that no it's synthetic it is a it contains carcinogens blah 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 it's different like cosmetic grade derivative of um crude oil are highly highly refined to remove all the toxins but let's not jump let's not jump to addressing criticisms let's address what it is and how it is used the most important use of petroleum jelly petrolatum is for its occlusive ability petrolatum petroleum jelly is the most occlusive ingredient in the world well that we know of you did it by occlusion i mean it prevents you from losing water it prevents the skin from losing water essentially what what it does is it sits on the skin do you understand and forms a barrier more like a second skin so it prevents it traps everything inside and keeps everything outside everything underneath it is trapped in everything outside it is kept out so by doing that it prevents water from leaving the skin, I, we all know that water is essential for the health of our skin. It prevents water from losing, leaving the skin and it prevents bacteria, allergens and, com and contaminants from getting into the skin. That is the major benefit or use of petroleum jelly or petrolatum. It stops transepidermal water loss up to 99%. It reduces it by 99%. It is a fantastic ingredient. There is none like it. There are inclusive things out there. Though. There is, you know, here and there, dimeticon, shea butter. There are things that can help you prevent water loss, but there is none. None like petroleum jelly. And let me explain to people that can benefit from petroleum jelly why you may need it in your skincare routine. So generally, the people that benefit from using petrolatum are people with either dry, dehydrated skin types or people with sensitive skin barrier essentially people that want to retain water and people that want to protect their skin so the first of people that will benefit from petroleum jelly are people with eczema prone skin so eczema is characterized by dry itchy and skin 
scaly skin. People with eczema have a compromised skin barrier. They have a weak skin barrier. So most of them, or if not all of them, are deficient in something called phalagrin. Phalagrin is a major protein or an important protein in the skin that helps us have a solid skin barrier. Now usually when you have phalagrin, when it um, degrades, it degrades into something called natural moisturizing factor in our stratum corneum that helps us retain water. So if you are deficient in phalagrin, it means that you also don't have sufficient natural moisturizing factor, meaning that you lack the ability of really keeping your skin hydrated. Do you understand? Your skin barrier is compromised. When your skin barrier is compromised, is because it's weak a lot of allergens and bacteria can enter so you can you can you'll be bouncing up from one infection to the next also when you have eczema your skin is usually itchy now when you scratch it can also lead to tears and openings which through which these bacteria can also you know attack your skin now putting patrolatum over it will help you retain that water which you are struggling to retain and prevent those bacteria from entering your skin and attacking your skin. So people with eczema prone skin are a major category of people that benefit from using petroleum jelly. Secondly, people that have dry patches on their skin. For example, you may not have dry skin, you may not be eczema prone, but you have dry elbows, dry knees, dry feet. You can apply petroleum jelly as a last layer on these areas also people with compromised skin barrier so you may not have dry skin you may not have eczema skin to have a compromised skin barrier even people with oily skin can go through times when their skin barrier is compromised essentially how you know your skin barrier is compromised or is off you experience things like you know contact dermatitis so that's rashes sensitivity, irritation, redness. When you're experiencing any of these things, it means your skin barrier is compromised. And there are different things that can, that can lead to that. For example, you are on an acne routine, and usually acne routines are usually sensitizing and drying. So you may be on an acne routine that you cannot stop at the moment, but you want something that will help combat that dryness from um, the acne routine that is a good time to incorporate petroleum jelly in your routine don't worry i'll get to how you can use it soon and another thing is you may have gone or have gone some chemical um cosmetic procedures for example chemical pills micro needling when you do these things after these procedures your skin barrier is usually compromised you experience redness mutation peeling do you get also you may not have acne but you are on a routine for example you just recently incorporated retinoids in your routine and retinoids you know that when you start retinoid, you go through a process called retinization, which you experience sensitivity, irritation, and peeling. Now, during that process, you can use petroleum daily to help encourage your skin barrier to heal. There are different things that can cause your skin barrier to be compromised. You can also just over exfoliate your face. In fact, I advise that everybody should have some petroleum based product in their starch. So that when, for any reason, if you overdo something and your skin barrier is compromised, you can use petroleum jelly. Protect your skin and encourage it to heal. Now, number four, I've already touched on this a bit, encouraging wound healing. So it's advised post-surgery to apply petroleum jelly on the affected area. Also, if you have a cut, if you have a bone, you are encouraged to apply petroleum jelly on the affected area because to protect your skin, the cut or the bone from contaminants, at the same time, keeping that region hydrated and encouraging healing. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic ingredient. So there's something called skin chaffing or chafing. Now, some of you may not know this terminology, but when I explain, you understand. So essentially, this is skin chafing is like irritation, redness, rashes, or sensitivity that happens when your skin rubs against each other. Friction from skin to skin. For example, women, I'm sure you can understand, between your thighs, under your arm, under your bust. So friction that arises from skin to skin friction can cause irritation, that's skin chafing. Petroleum jelly is fantastic at controlling that. So now skin chafing jelly, um, or chafing or chafing, I don't even know, I'll put the name, is usually prominent in hot and humid region or during the summer months. And that's because when you sweat and there's friction, increases sensitivity also sweat in itself is an irritant so when you are your skin when there's a friction and there's now an irritant it just increases sensitivity applying 
petroleum jelly on the affected area, number one, forms a skin to reduce that friction and just helps heal that region. Lastly, it can be used to protect delicate parts of your face or body when applying on sensitizing products. For example, when using retinoids, um, around your eyes are really sensitive, so you may not want to apply retinoid or retinoic acid or tretinoin directly on that region. So our advice is use Vaseline under your eyes or on sensitive areas of your face before you apply retinoids or your sensitizing ingredients. Because what that means is when you apply the retinoids on your face and you have petroleum jelly underneath it, it will prevent it from affecting those areas. Ah, <sighs> wow. That was, that was intense. Now we know the benefits and people that can benefit from it. Let's talk about some of the, you know, claims or criticisms against using petroleum jelly. Now, in summary, to summarize all of them, they say it's unsafe, they say it's comedogenic, and they say it is carcinogenic. So essentially it's unsafe for the skin because it's synthetic and it was um, derived from crude oil. It is comedogenic, meaning that it will clog your pores. It is carcinogenic, meaning that it contains things that would cause cancer. All false, false, not substantiated, as in there's no, there's no evidence showing these things. Um, a lot of them, as I explained, is from the bias of how it is derived. Once again, cosmetic grade petroleum derivatives are not the same thing as fuel. It's a highly refined ingredient. I cannot emphasize on that enough. Do you understand? Now, some of their claims are founded, which I will address. For example, the idea that it is carcinogenic. Yes, the fact is that crude oil contains in its raw state contains some things that can cause cancer. However, as I point out, before it can be sold as cosmetics, it has been refined. These carcinogenic things has been extracted. It is not because one see a petroleum jelly has been used for years before me and you and our grandfathers were born. For hundreds of years, thousands of years. Do you get? There has been no case of petroleum jelly causing cancer. The good thing about ingredients that have stood the test of time is that there's a track record. They can trace it. If it will cause cancer in the next 50 years after application, they will spot it out. Do you get Just like tretinoin has stood the test of time. Do you understand? The thing about ingredients that have stood the test of time is that they have stood the test of time. There has been no case of petroleum jelly causing cancer for decades. So I wonder how clean beauty, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, decided to become scientists and i don't know but let's not let's not delve into that this video why does it feel like i'm ranting in this video that's not the point i just think i just i'm just passionate about this topic so yeah um it doesn't cause cancer highly refined highly refined now on the issue of comedogen comedogenicity um it is not comedogenic at all at all now i can understand why people that have oily and acne prone skin may not care for it and should not care for it. It is not a petroleum jelly issue. I think I've said this in several videos when I'm talking about rich moisturizers. People that have acne and oily prone skin get, for some reason, the acne triggers when they use rich and occlusive moisturizers. So this will happen when you use any rich and occlusive moisturizer. Although not everybody experiences this, some people have been shown, have been observed to experience triggering of their acne when they use rich moisturizers, do you get? So if rich moisturizer can trigger acne, is it now the world's most occlusive ingredient? You can understand why if you have oily acne prone skin, this may not be your favorite thing to use. But even people with acne and oily prone skin, in certain circumstances and instances, can benefit from it. For example, I explained, if you are experiencing skin barrier disruption because of a routine, if you have undergone a chemical peel or a chemical cosmetic procedure, if for any reason your skin barrier is disrupted, disrupted, you can use petrolatum during those periods to at least heal your skin barrier and get your skin barrier on track. Also, people with rosacea may not be a fan of petroleum jelly simply because it is really heavy and can feel hot to some people. And you know, rosacea um, prone skin 
can get triggered by that. Also, for the issue of it being unsafe and harmful, <laughs> and nothing that we'll not hear in this life. Hmm. Petrolatum, eh? Petroleum jelly is one of the world's safest ingredients you can put on your skin. And I'll explain why. You know now, you know, I don't just say things. I explain why. First of all, it doesn't absorb into your skin at all. It just sits down there. Um, sits down looking pretty. Do you understand? It doesn't absorb into your skin. So there's no case of some traces they found in our bloodstream. There's not that. It just sits on your skin and does its job. Softening your skin, preventing water, preventing your skin from losing water. So that's one. Two, it doesn't bind onto your skin cells or any protein in your skin. And that why there's a fantastic thing is that most ingredients bind onto proteins. And when something can bind onto protein, that's why no matter how non-sensitizing an ingredient is, there's a possibility that it will sensitize somebody. Because when ingredients bind onto protein in your skin, you have no control of how your skin sees it. Your skin can all of a sudden say, what is that thing? What is that thing? And release histamine. And that creates an allergic reaction. Do you get? But Prashidam jelly doesn't bind onto anything. So it's on its own. It's on your skin, no. But in day own, you said day your own. Nobody's interacting. You get what I'm trying to say? So for that reason, uh, uh, just, 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 just think about this thing. People apply it to open wound. Biko, like you have a cut, you can apply petroleum jelly and not feel like you applied anything. In fact, you feel like you now have some protection. What other ingredients can you try that on? Okay, petroleum jelly is harmful, bar, but glycolic acid is safe. BHA is safe. Try putting BHA on an open wound. Do you understand? So if you can put something so on an open wound and it protects it and heals it, how safe can that ingredient be? Or rather, how harmful can it be? But you should stop. People should stop now. Me and I know they talk this kind of thing. Talk things without backing and without processing it properly. I beg, I beg, I beg. So now we know, you know how to use it. We know that it's not harmful. Let's talk about the best ways to incorporate it in your routine. When layering film jelly, always remember something I said. It traps things in and it leaves things out. Do you get Having that in mind, I suggest three ways in which you can use it. Now, the first way is applying to damp skin. Now, with petroleum jelly, remember, it does not hydrate. It locks in moisture. So, applying petroleum to dry skin is locking in dry skin. You have defeated the purpose. There is no moisture for you to lock in. That way, you can use petroleum jelly is hydrating first. So, you wash your face or have your bath apply a humectant so it holds onto that water then apply your petroleum jelly over it and the third way which is my preferred method and i think i mentioned something like this in my video on shea butter is that you have your bath moisturize so you get the full benefit of a moisturizer then lock it in as in maximum moisturization fantastic fantastic way of using petroleum jelly honestly my opinion is using petroleum jelly um with actives sorry woman with actives is a waste of product let's paint a scenario if you use let me say petroleum jelly with glycolic acid salicylic acid azelaic acid name them how do you use it if you use it before your um petroleum jelly it would increase irritation because it traps things in do you get? Now, the best way to explain this thing is, imagine jello fries. You're cooking jello fries. Mm? And you guys know I like food analogies. You're cooking jello fries and you have different pots. One of them, imagine the condiments in the jello fries as the active that you have put before your moisturizer or petroleum jelly. On one pot, you cook your rice and cover it. Imagine the cover to be moisturizer. So you use your actives and you moisturize. In the other pot, you use your actives, you cook your rice, then you put foil. That foil is petroleum jelly, then you cover it. Would it taste the same way? Eh? Have you cooked jello fries and used foil before? Everything is heightened. That is what we call party jello. It's not the same thing. That is how using moisturizers and petroleum jelly over actives 
would look like. It would heighten everything, increase irritation, increase, as in, you dare not put Vaseline on top of tretinoin. It would heighten the irritation and reaction. Obviously, there are some people that can tolerate it, but I mean, I'm advising a wide audience, so I have to point these things out. So let's now take, for example, you decide to put your actives after the Vaseline or after your petroleum jelly. Remember I said it traps things in and leaves things out. Honestly speaking, a lot of times it's a waste of product because it will not be able to get past that petroleum jelly and work on your skin. So now what I personally would advise is if you're using Vaseline, how you use it will be dependent on why you're using it. For example, if for example you had a cosmetic procedure and you are undergoing disrupted skin barrier, I'll just say, use it at night, obviously wash your face, moisturize, then use Vaseline until your skin barrier gets back to normal. If it's a case where you are on a routine or you are using a product like retinoid and it's sensitizing your skin, I would advise on your off days, use Vaseline. Do you get so, um, let's say you use your retinoids three times a week or four times a week, on days that you don't use your retinoids, use Vaseline to, you know, help as in heal that skin barrier. So also, um, if you are using Vaseline or you are practicing the slugging method in which you slather Vaseline or ointment all over your face, um, ensure that your skin is clean. Don't use just makeup, uh, makeup wipes or micellar water. Clean your skin properly because it traps things in, remember? So if you have death going on there, it traps it in. Do you understand? And that will lead to irritation and sensitivity. You get what I'm trying to say? Um, yeah, and also it mustn't be Vaseline. It mustn't be Vaseline. There are other petrolatum based products. Now, for example, we have the CRV healing ointment. I think I'll do a video comparing ointments and the best ones for you. You have the CRV healing ointment. It contains like high amount of, you know, petrolatum and other beneficial ingredients. So it mustn't be Vaseline. You can use any ointment or petrolatum based product to still achieve the result. It's just that Vaseline in itself is 100% petrolatum and does a fantastic job at preventing water loss and protecting the skin from irritants and allergens. With these few points of mine, I hope I've convinced you and not confused you that slogging is the way to go. <laughs> no, 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 but I'm sure you get my Jisha. So yeah, um, that's all I have for Vaseline and how to use it. I think I've explained what it is, pros, cons, how to use it and how to incorporate it in your routine. Yes, yeah, so that's essentially it. If you have more questions, if you have more video ideas, please leave them in the comment section. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you in my next video. Bye.